Seven reasons why I left Windows and joined Linux. The first reason was essentially just curiosity. I started getting videos recommended on my YouTube feed and I just started watching and I got curious. <laughs> it really is as simple as that. Like I just started uh, researching the benefits and compared to Windows and this and that. And um, it's basically the six other reasons I'll list, but just number one was curiosity. I was curious, I downloaded Linux Mint onto a virtual machine on Windows, and then kind of played around with that, kind of got bored, because I'm like, oh, this is just Windows, but not Windows. And then I just instantly, it's like I went from like, like vaping to like crack cocaine. I just went to Arch Linux instantly. I downloaded Arch Linux on a virtual machine, just learned all that. Didn't know what I was doing, had to restart multiple times, but I learned, you know, I learned quite a lot and I just went straight to the deep end. And I don't know, that's, that, it, I like that. It suits me. Maybe not for other people, but I enjoyed that. And then after that, I just installed Linux or Arch Linux on my computer, bare metal. Um, I still dual boot Windows and very occasionally use it, but I don't really play games anymore. So I have zero reason to really use it. So yeah, but overall it was just curiosity. I was just curious. I've always been an a tech enthusiast, always wanted to push my system to the max, to my knowledge about my system to the max, and Linux fulfilled that. So yeah. So number two is that it's customizable to death. Let's just look at my setup here. I, it, my setup I feel like is very unique. This is uh, DWM, is the window manager on Arch Linux. But I've customized it in such a way that it doesn't really look like DWM, like you can, you can tell but it isn't really. And I don't know, I just love it. This is how I love, like I wanted my setup. Like this is actually my dream setup. It's just, it's completely, I guess, universal to how I like my things. And you know, it's got a nice color scheme. It's, yeah, yeah it's, it's got a nice color scheme. It's got this like blurred um, thing and a little bit like of opacity. So I don't know, it looks nice. Kind of has that like Mac OS look to it, which I've always liked. And yeah, but I mean, it's still, you know, a tiling window manager, I can just like, you know, tile like that. So, you know, it's more efficient. So yeah, customizable. And let's say you don't like how my setup looks. Well, that's fine. Because there are literally a kajillion ways you can customize your setup. If you look at, there's a subreddit called Unix porn. And it has just, it's basically people that post screenshots of their setup like mine. And they'll just share it. And sometimes it's like, you know, videos and stuff, just showing how much people can push their system to the max, like how much they can customize it to be completely unique. So, you know, if you're just getting into Linux and customization, then that's a great place to start. Just kind of see what's possible, see what you like and just mimic and imitate. But yeah, so customizability, just unparalleled because everything is open source and you can just check the code and edit the code line by line. You can't do that on Windows. Windows and Mac, it's completely locked. So you're very limited on how much you can change because they just don't want you to change everything. They want to keep it to a certain standard. You know, they'll let you have change within, you know, small constraints. But on Linux, it's basically up to you. You know, it's kind of like sky's the limit. It's literally up to you. So yeah, uh, number three is that it's just lightweight. Right now, I am recording a video. I've got some browsers open in the background and um, got a PDF open and I'm only using 3.22 gigs of RAM. On Windows, when I would load in, just Windows 10, I'd load in, I'd boot up, already using about 4.5 gigs. So it's just simply way less, it's way more lightweight in general. Linux is incredibly good for performance, incredibly good for computers that are quite old. If you've got old laptops or old computers that like they're not bad, but they're just too slow for Windows. They, they don't work on Windows. Then Linux is perfect. Obviously, it depends on what you're using. My setup is quite minimalist. I use like terminals and I use um, DWM, which is very lightweight. It's only like a thousand line of code. Same with the, the terminal, ST, which stands for simple terminal. So it's quite just bare bones. So it, it depends. There are 
desktop environments, uh, I think it's called GNOME, which is actually quite intense on your resources, but there's other stuff like KDE, which is a lot better on your resources. So do some research on what kind of window manager or desktop environment you want to use and just see how performance heavy it is, whether it's good for your setup. But there's so many different options that there'll always be one that's good for you. So yeah, my setup, it's very lightweight because that's just how I like it. Don't like it to be bloated, you could say. Um, not that I need to, my computer's quite like decent. Like you can just see here, it's like pretty decent. I don't need it to be very simple, but that's how I like it. But it also comes with its own drawbacks. It's a lot more of a pain to do certain things with my setup, whereas a different setup, a different desktop environment, window manager, it's a lot easier to do things. So it's up to you, it's up to you. But in general, Linux is gonna be a lot more lightweight than Windows. Windows is quite bloated. There's a lot of programs that you can't install. There's a lot of things in the background that it's just completely locked because you don't have access. It's not really, you, you don't own your Windows copy. The Windows copy kind of owns you. You have to pay for a license and renew it and this and that. There's none of that in Linux. You just download it and it's yours. The license is completely FOSS, free and open source software. So yeah, number four is that it's free and it's community driven. So this idea of freedom, and it's not free in terms of like, you don't have to pay for it. It is true, you don't have to pay for it, but it's free in terms of there is freedom. There's freedom to change everything. And this kind of goes back into the customization and it kind of it trickles down into a lot of different things. But the fact that it's open source means that it's a lot more private, a lot more secure. And people, you know, again, it has drawbacks. Sometimes it can be faster on fixing updates, sometimes it can be slow, but usually it tends to be fast on fixing updates because there'll always be people that really want to, you know, something, some bug breaks in some program. There'll be people that are just like, oh, well, I really need this to work. So they'll go into the code and, and they'll fix it and they'll post, they'll uh, put a pull request or what, yeah, a pull request on GitHub and it'll get pushed and then boom, it fixed. It fixed just by people really wanting it to get fixed. Often on Windows, certain problems will occur and it just doesn't get fixed. It might take forever for it to get fixed because like there isn't that much of an interest. They already have your money. There isn't too much of an incentive to keep it working. You know, there is and there kind of isn't, you know. Linux, because it's run by the community, for the community, by the community, if the community has an issue and because it's run by them, they're just gonna fix it. So logically, it's almost always faster in terms of problems and Again, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. You know, you can literally just download a copy of Linux, any Linux distro, put it on a virtual machine and try, like today. It doesn't even take that long. So, yeah, the fact that it's free really means that, you know, like, like I don't want to spoil it too much because it kind of trickles into this other reason, but, you know, you're not kind of owned by the products that you're using. In Windows and Mac, the products kind of own you but you have complete control, complete access to everything. You can see what's happening. So yeah. So number five is it's more private. And again, this trickles down from the fact that it's free. How's it more private? Well, on Windows, a lot of the, it's called closed source. It's a proprietary, 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 proprietary software. Same with Mac OS, it's locked only the developers and you know people that work in Apple and Windows can see the code. Because of this, you don't know what's running in the background. You know, you can, there's a very small amount that you can really see. And because of that, data is, it's not even like it's, it's likely, it is stolen from you. It's harvested, it's sold for ads, this and that. I'm pretty sure Windows 11 now has ads within the, like just basic tools like the file explorer, which is just, it's crazy. <laughs> that, like it's just trying to milk you as much as possible. And you know, these ads tend to track you and stuff. So it's extremely not private. You don't really have any privacy at all. And you're just kind of milked for as much money as possible. So in this instance, Linux, because it's free, because it's open source, you can view the code and maybe you're not a tech genius. You don't understand all the lines of code and stuff, but other people do and they'll analyze it and they'll monitor what's getting published, what's getting pushed. And they see, wait, wait a second, this code is 
scanning you or monitoring you and sending it to these people or whatever they can see oh okay this is not private this is a bad push to the code or this is a bad program this is this is stealing data from you and then everyone will know because the community is quite against the fact that you know programs just stealing and harvesting data for you the linux community is quite i guess um they all believe that a program should do what it's meant to do and do it well and not do all these other things that it's not even intended to do and you know it just honestly makes the program worse like giving you ads and stealing your data and stuff that's not what the program is meant for so then remove it it's not necessary so yeah in this instance linux will always be more private and be the safer option for you it's not like linux users are like criminals or anything but it's just kind of weird like do you want all your data to be seen and you, you don't know what's being collected from you by mac mac os and windows so you know do you want your door constantly open and people allowed to see what you do in your house like no that's just kind of weird you don't want like we have blinds we have curtains and stuff to make people not like poke for our house at night and stuff so it's the same way with this you know why would you want your computer to be vulnerable for people to snope and see what you're doing and stuff it's just creepy so number six is the ease of use in certain areas. So I won't say that Linux is entirely a lot easier to use. There is a bit of challenge, especially like how I'm using it is like the deep end. You know, it's probably as hard. I mean, you can get a little bit more extreme and harder to use, but this is about as hard as most people will go. But it's not even that hard. But comparatively to Windows, yes, Windows, there is a lot of good ease of use features of Windows. But in this instance, this one I truly love. And it seems very small, but it does save you time. It's downloading. Downloading is so perfect on Windows. Look, if I want to download a program, okay, I open up a terminal and I type in P. Now, P is actually a shortcut. It's actually a shortcut for Pac-Man. So Pac-Man S. Okay, I want to download Firefox. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Forgot you have to. Okay, now I'm in root. Okay, oh, yep, yep. And in a couple of seconds, I would have downloaded Firefox, and that's it. On Windows, you simply just cannot. Oh, yeah, done. On Windows, you cannot download a program as fast. It's impossible, and it's just less clean. You have to download an installer. You click on the installer. You wait. You now you have an installer that you got to delete from your. It's just messy. Linux, simple. And not only that is that once you're done, you know, if you want to get rid of the program, type this in now again this is just me so okay sudo that's to put in root pacman dash rns and again it will be different from distro to distro but specifically this this just gets rid of the firefox but i also downloaded this other program this is a dependency called mailcap and that just automatically uninstalls that because i don't i didn't explicitly download that program but that program was needed for firefox but it also, so the reason why I want to get fire, like if I get rid of Firefox, I also don't want this program that I don't actually have a use for. So it just gets rid of it automatically and it cleans it out and boom, it's like, I never even downloaded Firefox. Often on Windows, you download a program, you uninstall it, but there are still like remnant folders and stuff. It's just weird. It's hard to cleanly install, you know, certain programs on Windows. You know, when, Linux, it's just clean. It's just boom. Um, and obviously, it, it depends on your distro, but honestly, most distros work exactly the same. It's just different commands that you type in. But in this instance, this is the easiest way. And not only that, you know, let's say I want to update my system. All I type in, and again, because I've set it to P equals Pacman, you know, it just automatically does that, dash SYU. Oh, okay, it looks for updates. There are no updates. It's up to date, done. And this does not just update the system. So for example, in Windows, you know, you have like system updates. This will also do the system updates for Linux, you know, your Linux kernel and, you know, all these stuff, but also your programs. So let's say I download Firefox and let's say, you know, there's an update to the Linux kernel and stuff, but then there's also an update to Firefox. When I type this command in, which basically just updates the system, it updates every single program as well. Let's say there isn't even a, a Linux kernel update, but I just have some random program update. Let's say Steam updates or Google Chrome or whatever. Then when I type this command, it just automatically updates for me. Simply, it's just not this easy to do. This is just a million times better than Windows. There is no way on Windows that you can do it as quick as this. Even even Mac, I think. I'm not too familiar with Mac, but I'm pretty sure this is the 
the fastest way you can just download any program so this is the like the biggest example i can think of you know it might seem like weird like oh you can download stuff better that's why you should switch to linux but i'm like wow okay because downloading on, on windows is kind of a pain and it's a it's a pain when you don't realize that you can just do it like this and not only like this this has been the predominant method before windows even existed i'm pretty sure you know just a package manager you can download whatever program you want so you know sometimes if you want to download a very obscure program that is not in your package manager then maybe it'll be a little bit hard you'll it'll be similar to downloading a program on windows but on arch linux we have something called the user repository where you can just post you know just random users can post programs and with a I forgot what it's called but like a helper like a helper program so in this instance it's called yai i can just do the same thing and then download a very specific version of firefox let's say like okay i did the order complete but it's taken a while but okay so let's say i want to see firefox okay if i want to download firefox vimium whatever this is you know this is probably not included with my normal package manager but i can download it through here so um, just on Arch Linux at least you just get access to way more programs than what is possible on uh, Like Windows and it's just super quick super easy Yeah, and then the final reason is it's secure The security on Linux is unparalleled Windows is the most popular most popular operating system of the yeah most popular operating system just in general so it has the most user base so attackers Hackers, they're just going to target Windows because everyone is on Windows from the, you know, really smart people who know how to use Windows really well and protect themselves, but also grandmas, grandpas, little kids, you know, and even just your parents who kind of know computers like, all right, like they can do their emails and stuff, but anything more than that, not so much. So obviously most attackers are just going to target for this, but people that are on Linux tend to be let's be real nerds like I'm kind of a nerd at this you know I kind of understand this stuff uh, pretty well and the thing is most hackers are actually Linux users but they know that most Linux users actually know how their system works very well it's simply a lot harder to really like attack Linux to put a virus on it so for this reason it's very unlikely that you would ever get a virus on Linux it's possible if you're trying like if it's it's possible, but honestly, if you just stick to downloading safe programs and stuff, you'll never get it. Obviously, even on Windows, if you just have good practices, you're likely not to get uh, viruses, but Linux is just extremely a lot more secure. And not even just for the fact of like numbers, how many people are on Linux compared to how many people are on Windows. Linux inherently, because it's uh, free and open source, you can view all the code, it is able to like people are able to develop security patches a lot quicker than windows you know it's just simple because again it's run by the community for the community so if the community is experiencing something that's negative oh there's this huge security patch within well, the community doesn't want this bad thing to happen so they're going to fix it as quick as possible so again usually things get fixed and implemented a lot quicker on linux compared to windows and yeah that's about it um those like these were the seven reasons why i really loved kind of fell in love with linux and joined the community it can be a pain in some areas but honestly i think i never will go back because I, I don't see why my system is tailored to me the system is run by me for me the system doesn't own me i don't have to oh i have to do this and that like it doesn't control me the same way windows would like used to control me like oh like you just have to do things in the most asinine way you can't have things in your own way you know customization is basically infinite on linux so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned something please like subscribe and i'll see you guys next time